Hey everybody, today we're talking about arrays, a few different ways to create them, and how those different ways affect the programs that we write and the options that you have as a programmer. Hey, welcome back everybody. I haven't really done a beginner video in a while, and it seems like in my classes with my students, I've been dealing a lot with array issues. And so I thought it might be a good day to discuss arrays. Static arrays, dynamic arrays, fixed sizes, variable sizes, pointers to arrays, basically all that good stuff both in C and in C++. Now this is a beginner video, but you intermediate programmers may find something that you don't know, or you may find something that you have forgotten or not thought about for a while, and it's always good to get a refresher. Now, of course, there will be code in this video. As always, source code is available through Patreon. A big thanks to all of you that support this channel. So if you're watching this video, you've probably at least heard about arrays. Maybe it's something that came up in class. Maybe you're actually coming to this video with a specific question about about arrays. If by some chance I don't answer it, please drop me a question down in the comments below and I will try to get to it in a future video. And of course, if I do answer your question or you find this video useful, please consider dropping the video a like. Now onto arrays. Now basically arrays are what we use anytime we want to store a series, a bunch of elements. These elements can be ints or characters or floats or structs, but we want a bunch of them laid out sequentially in memory, basically just a list you know, 5, 10, 15, whatever. And in C and C++, the elements of our arrays need to be the same type. Now you can, of course, use pointer tricks and polymorphism if we're talking about C++ to store different kinds of elements in a single array. That's not what I'm talking about today, but make sure and mention down in the comments if you'd like to see a video about that in the future. But either way, from your compiler's point of view, an array is homogeneous, meaning that all of the different things in the array are of the same type. And if we jump into the code, I have a very simple program here. We can define our simplest of arrays like this. So this array is called A, it's gonna have five elements, and we can initialize it with the numbers between one and five, okay? Super simple array with an initializer. I don't need the initializer. This part I could just leave off if I wanted to. So this declares a static array of ints and its length is five. Hey, future Jacob here. I just wanted to jump in and clarify one little thing. I realized after I filmed it that I was using the word static and that may get confused with the static keyword in C. Now I have a video that talks about the static keyword in C. I'll link to that in the description. Please check it out if you're confused. But when I say static here, what I mean simply is that these arrays don't grow. They're a fixed size array. The compiler allocates memory for them statically and that memory doesn't grow or shrink. It just stays the same. That's what I mean by static. Okay, that's it. Let's get back to the video. So this declares a static array of ints and its length is five. When the compiler sees this, it's going to set aside space in memory for five integers, five ints, and then we can simply interact with those ints something like this. Like I can say the first element is the zeroth element. So I can do something like this if I wanna set that first element to 76. It's important to note for beginners that we do start with zero. If you're wondering about why that is, I do have a video that talks about that. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. But so here we can set our first element to be 76 and we can also get the value of the second element. So something like we could say X equals a square bracket one. So this is basically going to grab the second element of the array A and and assign its value to x. And of course, what happens when we wanna pass our array to a function? Okay, so let's say I've got this array and I wanna pass it to a function. Let's start out with a really simple function. Let's just say we wanna make one that prints out arrays. So let's, it's not gonna return anything for now, but we'll call it print array and we're gonna pass in an array, we'll call it my array and we're gonna make its length five. Okay, so just like my array down below. So when you pass this in, now all I'm gonna do is have a quick little for loop. We're gonna go to five. And then each time through the loop, we're going to print out the value of the ith element in the array. Forgot a comma at our semicolon. And then down here at the end, just to make things look nice, Let's just add a new line at the end. Okay, so what this is gonna do is it's just gonna go through and it's going to print out each element in the array on a line and then it's gonna end the line once we finish. Okay, nothing too complicated here. Now, if we come down here and we call it on one of our arrays, just like this, and let's just for interest sake, let's go down and make a second array that's going to be the same, but with some different values. And we'll do the reverse of the numbers. Now we can come in here and we can call it on A and we can call it on B. Okay, so now I'm going to compile my code and come down and I can compile it. And we do have one warning, which is this X is never used. So for now, I'm just going to remove these two lines 
Okay, now I'm going to compile my code using a little makefile that I created, nothing fancy here. If you are new to makefiles and you haven't seen these before, be sure to check out my other videos on make. I'll put links in the description. But so using this makefile, I can come down here and I can compile my program, no problem. And I can run it and you can see it prints out the elements of each array. I'm kind of not liking having a new line at the end of each. I meant it to be all in the same line, sorry about that. So. We can recompile and we can run. And they are still a little bunched together, so let's add a comma and a space, make things, make our output a little bit cleaner. Okay, here we go. So now you can see it prints out the elements in the array all in a line, and then it jumps to the next one for the next array. So this worked and it's a good first step, but it has some limitations. I wanna talk about them before we move on. The first one is that all of this code so far is very, very static. What I mean by that is that it's fairly inflexible. This, the length of this array is five, this array is five. My print array up here can only accept things that are of length five. And in reality, sometimes we want to deal with different lengths. And sometimes we don't necessarily know what the length needs to be until we get into our program. And so this limits us a little bit. It's not super flexible. Now, one other thing that I would always do in any real program, even for static arrays, is I would get rid of these magic number fives. I would come up here and either pound define a constant or use a const int. Let's use const int for now. And we'll call this array length, set it equal to five. And then what we can do here is come down and we'll just replace everything in our program with array length. And this basically just gives me the flexibility of saying, let's say at some point I want to actually change what the length of all of these different arrays are. I can just change it in one place rather than having to remember everywhere in my code that needs to be changed. But again, let's come back to this question of what if I don't know what length my array needs to be? Or what if I need arrays to be of different sizes and maybe I want to use a function that can work on all of them. So well, let's focus on one thing at a time. How would I make an array where I can pick the size at runtime? Now for this, I wanna show you just a few different options. Now the classic way to do this is with a pointer. So the way I would do this is say, so I would specify an integer pointer and then I would call malloc and tell it the size. So malloc allocates a block of memory and I'm gonna tell it the size of the thing I need, which is I need the size of an int. So that's gonna tell me the size and memory of an integer times the size of the thing that I want. So in this case, I could use array length, but I can use really anything in here. So I could use seven, I can use 567, whatever I want, I can basically specify the size I want. And this is something that happens at runtime. So it's super easy for me to specify the size if I want to make it bigger or small. Say for example, I'm going to read in some data and I need to make an array that's the size of the data. Well, that's hard to know beforehand what that's gonna look like, but with this approach, super easy. If I have some variable that has that value in it, I can just pass it directly there. Okay, so this gives us the ability to create an array of variable size. Now we can come down here and we can try to print out that array. At this point, I just wanna mention that, yes, this is a pointer, but from now on, we can basically just use P like we did any other array. And that's because pointers and arrays are almost exactly the same thing. Look, if you're a little fuzzy about the relationship between arrays and pointers, I do have another video that looks at that issue, another beginner video. I actually mentioned it before already, but there is a link down in the description, so please check it out if this is a little fuzzy. Now, before I go into printing this out, the other thing that we need to do differently about this array is once we're done with it, we also need to free that pointer. So once we're done with that array, once we don't need it anymore, then we're basically going to release it and say, hey, I don't need this pointer anymore. So I'm giving it back to the system, to the allocator, to the heap. Okay, so now let's revisit our print array function. So I, I can call it just like this and that's cool, except that when I go around to run it, you're gonna notice that, well, something happens. First of all, I said I wanted it to be 567 entries, but I only got five, right? I'm able to pass it in, but my program up here basically just says, I only work on arrays of length five. So we wanna make this function a little more flexible. I would like to be able to actually print out arrays of any length. And so what you're gonna see instead is you're gonna see a pattern with a lot of functions that take arrays as arguments is instead they're gonna pass in a pointer and they're not gonna specify this length right here. They're gonna pass in two arguments instead you're gonna get an array and you're going to get a length argument, okay? And then right here, we basically would come down here, change 
this length in our loop. So now we're gonna go basically to the length that gets passed in. And the rest of this just stays the same, right? We just now are saying, instead of me knowing beforehand that everything that's gonna come in is going to be length five, now I'm gonna ask you to give me the length. You, the programmer, the person calling this function tells me how long this thing is. And then I will just respect that. Okay, so then down here when we call it, we would need to pass in the lengths. Let's use our integer array length. And then down here, okay, so I don't have, I'm still using a magic number here, but for now that's fine. Um, let's make it a little bit shorter so it'll still fit on one line. But so we have 15, 15, okay, great. Now, if I come down here, I can run it and you can see, okay, it works fine on my first two and then it works fine also on my P array. And one thing to keep in mind here is that Yes, all of these entries right now are zeros, but that's not guaranteed to be the case. When you get memory from malloc, you're not guaranteed to have zeros. You can use calloc, which actually is guaranteed to zero them out, or you can also go through and make sure you initialize this data to something else. So you could have another for loop in here that actually goes through and initializes your variables. So like, for example, we could do this, go up to 15. I really need to pound to find that somewhere, but I'm not going to just for the moment. So let's have this one count up too. So we're just initializing this to a certain value. And mostly I'm doing this so you can see that the values change. So now you can see that yes, we went from zero to 14 instead of just all zeros. But like I said before, if you don't initialize it, you're not guaranteed that they're all gonna start out as zeros. So if you want them to all be zero, you could either start out with a for loop that sets them all to zero, or you could use something like memset to set them all to zero. Any of those approaches will work just fine. Now, one thing that I wanna point out here with this print array function is that we're basically trusting the caller to give us the right length. If the caller sends us the wrong length for whatever reason, then I could handle either too few entries or worse, I can read or write too many entries which can corrupt memory or just access memory that we aren't supposed to access, which could give us garbage results or it could seg fault. Like for example, let's just say I come down here array length and I say I give it a length that is twice as long. So it's gonna be 10. And if we run this, I don't really know what we're gonna get, but you can see that we ended up with a bunch of just garbage numbers, right? We basically just were reading whatever memory happens to be right next to A, and it doesn't happen to be anything helpful. And so we got the length wrong, this just messed us up. And so when you're using this approach, you do have to be very careful to get the lengths right. Now, if you're coming from a higher level language like Java, Python, Ruby, or even C++, if you've been mostly using vectors, you might be wondering, why can't I just programmatically get the length of this thing? Why isn't there some get length method or, I mean, we're talking about C here, so why isn't there a get length function that you just pass in an array and it just grabs the length and the thing is, is that C and C++ arrays don't store a length with the array in memory. They set aside memory, the compiler is gonna set aside memory for the array, but there is no length stored in there. So you really just have to keep track of that length yourself. Okay, now speaking of C++, let's just make a quick copy of this program. Let's make a C++ version of this, okay. And this just allows us to talk about one other option. And of course you will note that in my make file, I already set this up so that it will actually compile C and CPP files using the C++ compiler for the one and the C compiler for the other. No problem, but I just need to add array to two in here. So now it will compile both versions. Oops, I forgot to name it right. So let's array test.cpp. We're going to move it to array test2.cpp. Let's clear this. Okay, now we should be able to compile it. And of course, okay, so one thing you are noticing here is that C++ has a few different requirements. They're a little picky about what's coming back from malloc, and so they would want me to cast it in C++ to basically say this is an int pointer, no problem. Okay, but so we have our programs, they're both working, our C++ version and our C version. The reason I wanted to show you this is simply that most C++ programmers would not allocate it like this using malloc, although you absolutely can, it's no problem. But instead, we can also replace this with the new operator like this. And so this might be a little prettier. This is basically just saying, give me a new integer array that has 15 elements, no problem. So that's going to function exactly the same except that down here, instead of free, now we need to say delete p, 
Okay, so we're basically just taking advantage of these operators. And because we're deleting an array, we need our square brackets here. And now if we compile it, okay, so we can compile this, no problem. And we can run it and everything's working the same. Okay, now I've had people ask in the past whether or not you can use free instead of delete to release a block of memory that was allocated with new. And in practice, this is really going to depend on how new and delete are implemented. If delete was just translated by the compiler into a free call, then sure, this could work. Why not? But that's not guaranteed to be the case. C++ could actually do be doing something differently with new than with malloc. And so you really shouldn't do that. So in your programs, use free with pointers that came from malloc, use delete with pointers that came from new. Okay, now what do we do if we want to resize an array? This is a question that comes up a lot. And for this, let's jump back into our C example. Let's look at this array that we got from malloc. If we are in C, we can really simply change the size of this. So I can just say p equals realloc. I pass in the same pointer that I got from malloc. So that's going to basically say this is I want to reallocate this block and I give it the new size that I want. So in this case, I still want integers, but maybe I want 20 of them. So I'm basically saying, give me five more than I had originally. And so this is going to reallocate the block. So now if I come in here, we're going to have a length of 20. Now keep in mind that again, those were not initialized. And so when I run this, so in this case, it's printing them all out. In this case, we're seeing that they're all zeros. But let's say that I had, if we go back and we see and we initialize them to an actual value, the initial ones, and we recompile, then you notice that basically the only ones that are initialized are these first 15. The last five that I just added on here, they're just zeros. And again, you're not guaranteed that they're going to be zeros. They could be anything. They just happen to be zeros in this case. And so, of course, you can see that this works. In your programs, you might want to see about initializing those new entries anytime you realloc something just before you get too far into things. But now if we jump back into our C++ version, what about resizing our array over here? Well, this is one situation where new and delete are kind of a pain. I can't exactly just say resize this array. I could allocate a bigger array and copy my data over from my smaller array and then delete the old array. And that's just a pain. And I know that this is essentially what realloc may be doing under the hood. But the point is, is I didn't have to do it. And so that's always a plus. So in this case, what's a C++ programmer to do? Will they stoop down to the old C style interface? Maybe. But most often what they're going to do is just use vectors or some other container class from the standard template library that handles resizing for them. And of course, that's fine too. Small amount of overhead, but probably nothing to worry about. Of course, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video on vectors, containers, or other C++ topics. But let's not get derailed because there's more to say about arrays. So back in the old days, statically defined arrays like this had to have a constant size. So basically 5 works, 7 works, 15 works, but some dynamic variable x doesn't work. At least that's how it used to be. Later versions of the C standard library allowed array sizes to be any integer expression. So for example, say I wanted to make an array that would store the lengths of the different arguments passed into my program. So basically, I want one integer for every element of my argv array, then I can do something like this here. I can just make an integer array, we'll call it arg lengths. And we're going to make it the length argc, right? Because that's what argc tells us. Argc is this integer coming in. And so we're saying, I want an array and I want it to be the size of argc, whatever argc happens to be. And then I can go through, let's just copy this and go to argc. And then what I can do is something like, let's just get the length since that's what I said I was going to be getting. I want to say arg lengths i is string length argvi. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to go through and get the string length of each of my arguments, and it's going to store them in my array. So now down here, we can use print array on my arg lengths array, pass in argc. And so this way back in the old days would not have worked. Oh, and it still doesn't work today because I forgot to include string.h. Okay, but now if we run this like this, well, you can see, okay, right off the bat, uh, there's only one argument and it is length 11. Okay, it turns out that that's array test. If I pass in a bunch of other arguments and I run it, you can see that sure enough, we have one of length 11, we've got a bunch that are length three. And, and so this array is not, is still not very dynamic in the sense that it's not changing size while my program is running. It's never resized. 
but my code is more flexible now. And this can make a lot of your programs a little simpler. In the old days, for something like this, you would have to call malloc. So we would have to specify the size. So we would have to specify the size of the int and the number of elements and all of that. And that's not really a big deal either way, but you have options. And in some cases that might be the better option. And so I hope this video helps you keep things straight. So I hope that helps. Be sure to check out my other videos on C and other low level programming concepts. Subscribe to the channel if you don't wanna miss out on the next one and I'll see you then.